Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 11, which is managing the customer service function. Here we are in the wonderful world of MKT 561 Services Marketing. Okay, so managing customer service, couple of, a couple of points. Firstly, what is the role of customer service management? Well, basically, it doesn't mean customer domination as the customer is always right, but more an orientation where the entire organisation thinks customer satisfaction but acknowledges that it's neither possible nor feasible to make every customer happy. So really it's about, if you like, maximisation of satisfaction within a reasonable uh, scope given what we can and can't deliver. And of course we've got to do it profitably and we've got to do it with meeting costs. So the other issue of course is, is management and measurement. And so in order to have some sort of customer service management as we saw in the previous lecture where I talked about quality and satisfaction, you have to have some sort of measurement approach as well. Servqual is, is an interesting approach here. It's a widely used measure for measuring uh, quality of service. And it's useful for us because it's been reported across a number of different industries. So you've got some idea of various benchmarks. It gives you an idea of the various dimensions or what makes up customer service. Benchmarking, of course, using things like the Net Promoter Score or comparing yourselves to service standards in industries is also an important aspect of managing customer service. Technology can also help us. Um, technology is useful in that, of course, we can tra track um, various types of customer complaints, uh, increasingly in social media these days, but also we can get used to customer requirements by the types of demands for our services at particular times, uh, particular flights, train services come to mind, or uh, ba online banking services, or even educational services. So Benico Bank is an example here of an organisation which uh, is using technology like many banks these days to help uh, manage its relationships. So of course this builds up a profile more about the user, their concerns, uh, their uh, services they're using, and so on. Here are some of the ServQual dimensions uh, which have been summarised the last few years. and includes things like reliability, assurance, and assurance is really responsiveness and competence, the tangible aspect of the services, having empathy with the, uh, with the customer, and responsiveness. And so these are sort of the dimensions these days that are really managed by the customer service function. Um, many organisations, uh, particularly in insurance, like Amy, also have customer service as a central part of its offering, the Amy Girl here, and of course in some of their additional services that they provide, such as roadside assistance. So people really matter. Managing the most important resource in service marketing is really what you should be focusing on here. So the recruitment of key people is important, people who like to work with other people, Remuneration, generally one of the challenges is that our frontline employees, those that sit in bank tellers or in call centres or uh, might be delivering lectures, are not often the most well-paid people, yet they are the face of the organisation. So remuneration and, uh, and tracking that back to customer satisfaction is particularly important. So, for example, the um, ANZ Bank uses the Net Promoter Score through all its branches and through all its business units and links that back to numeration and bonuses. So rewards, of course, related to that have to also be consistent with managing the customer service function. It's hard to manage this unless you empower uh, employees or decentralise to a large extent to allow the flexibility to um, recover services or to meet particular uh, customer requirements. So this is often a part of the human resource and I suppose operations part of services marketing. Why would you bother? Well, as shown here in Schlenger's and Helschitz customer loyalty model, you can see here that higher profit margins and better leads into better design, extensive training, better positive service employee satisfaction attitude, let, less turnover, which in turn leads to higher satisfaction, continuity with the customer, higher loyalty, repeat business and higher profit margins. So if you like, there's a virtuous circle between looking after your people and good customer service.
and good profits. So what are the st some strategies in managing the customer service? Well, one is what we call the five P's. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. So I'll repeat that. And uh, customer service manuals help often help provide uh, that as well. Uh, intermediary, so the idea of that our services should be delivered, may often be delivered by other people. So, for example, if you're a mobile phone provider, you are relying, you are, you may be uh, an intermediary for a main, somebody who owns the network, likewise with the NBN. So you might work on contractual arrangements to help control uh, or manage customer service, or you might administer the channel. Uh, administered channels are generally done by uh, companies wanting to work with you because of your reputation, or you may have a corporate structure to help manage um, uh, service in this area. And so you can see this in the banking industries where we've got brokers which are administered, we've got contractual, so we may have franchise operations and services, and we've got corporate or branch structures. So another part of this, of course, is the way that customers view our services. Benchmarking is an, a very important tool here because we can use benchmarking or what, serve, what companies have done from other services to help, um, to help develop new services here. The SDL, or Service Dominant Logic approach, can, be, can also be used in that customers can be asked to co-produce or be more empowered to do more of their services. And if you like, with online banking, uh, with customers designing their own mobile and broadband plans, we are in effect getting to co-produce the service more. And this can often help um, lead to better customer perceptions with us. The service duration is important uh, because that can influence the perceptions. So often a, a service encounter can be quite brief, um, or it could be uh, not occur regularly, or it could occur irregularly. And so this, these kinds of nature of the service encounter will influence our customer perceptions. Likewise, the complexity of the offering, if a service is complex, um, customers may become dissatisfied simply because they find it difficult to complete um, the delivery. So an effective means to reduce complexity is to use marketing communications to inform customers to enable them to understand a service together with staff who can show customers how to use a service. Here's an example of what I've just talked about. So a mobile phone provider in Mason helps users uh, online co-produce the service in areas such as NBN or my mobile service. And you can see here are some of the um, approaches or, or co-production here. The trending topics is often what is uh, useful. So they're collecting information about areas that people are interested in and they're frequently asked questions down here which might be potential problems. So this is a good example of using technology. Uh, Mason also have a call centre based in Australia, uh, which helps uh, with some people who might find doing this online quite difficult. All services are going to run into trouble occasionally, because remember they're processes, acts, deeds and performance, and you're going to get something wrong, um, even with a perfect system. So the real test then is how effectively an organisation responds when a service failure occurs. The issue is to identify the problems that cause the service failure, resolve the customer's problems, and use that failure to improve the process. So it's more than just complaint management. It's more a diagnostic approach. While we, sp we talked about blueprinting and benchmarking earlier. The second action in managing is to monitor and evaluate customer complaints. And the third general approach is to offer fast and appropriate responses where possible to customer complaints. And of course, you see that now a lot with social media. So a good example is mentioned in your textbook where uh, social medias were set up uh, with uh, the problem of Vodafone, who expanded too quickly into the Australian market and had an unreliable network. And what Vodafone were able to do from this social media uh, update, updates and compliance was improve their services. So what's the moral of the story? If you've got a problem in, in, with your service provider, use social media. You're more likely to get a very quick response because this stuff now is monitored as part of the customer service function. That's it for now. There's obviously a bit more here. You can read the textbook and online for topics information.
Thanks for listening and watching this presentation. Cheers.